that I know that there's been extreme warfare this week, this month. I want you to lift up your hands. I want you to step out of that aisle. And I want you to surrender. Come on, you'll be able to journey there. Lift up your hands. There's only a couple of you. But God wants to take you into another place in him. Hey! You've been looking for solutions. You've been looking for answers. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. Uh, but we trust in the name of the Lord. For we know that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into their safe. Some of you have been looking for a safe place. Some of you have been looking for a place where the enemy can't find you. You've been going through so much warfare. But the Lord says if you lift up your hands, if you open up your mouth, hallelujah, the Lord the Lord will give you strategies. The Lord will give you healing. The Lord will give you deliverance. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands one more time. Come on. Come on here.
not my norm, but I guarantee you, if you just lift up your hands, just slip up, just try it, just slip up your hands and say, Lord, I surrender. As you surrender, anxiety is going to drop off of you. As you surrender, all the stuff that's been trying to bring discouragement to your heart and your spirit is going to begin to drop off of you. The weight, the depression, suicidal ideations is going to begin to fall off of you even in this moment. so close to you that God I smell like you that I look like you that I'm being transformed by you if he can get you to believe 
a mirage. The Bible says that the enemy is a liar. He is the father of lies. So anything that the enemy has said against your family, against your health, against your job, against your business, look at your neighbor and say, it's a lie. It's not real. So listen, when you praise God, it puts God in his rightful place in your life and in your situation. Somebody said, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. What does that mean? God is about, when you praise God, he's about to put every situation in perspective. He's about to put everything in perspective. Somebody shout, it's my time to hear God praise. Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. I don't know about you, but I've come to give God praise. I don't know, but there was a once in a time, Mama, where I was scared of the enemy. But now as I've gotten older, I realize that when you decide to live for God, he's going to try to fight you anyway. So you, what, what you, as it reminds me, it's like, what are you scared for? Come on, sometimes we got to remember that we got to put on our warfare clothes. We got to get dressed, amen, with the right stuff. We got to put on your breastplate of righteousness. You got to get your sword of the spirit. Come on, the enemy's been beating up some of you, but this morning we've got victory. Come on, God wants to remind you of who you are and who you are and what he has in store for your life. Come on, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5. You have it. Let's stand for the reading of God's words. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Verse 6 says, but when you pray, come on, not if you pray, but when you pray, Go into your room and close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans for they think they will be heard because they're many words. Do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Verse 9 says, this is then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Come on, y'all know it. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as also we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive one, other, for if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive your sins. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would speak in this place. Father, I make myself little that you can be big. Show yourself strong. Father, I pray that your people would be edified and you would be glorified. Father, I submit myself unto you and Father, I say, take this tongue. Father, I open up my heart and my mind and my spirit. Father, I pray that you will speak with power and revelation and in demonstration. Father, move us into another place. Father, I pray now in the name of Jesus that your people to be edified, but you be glorified. And Father, we thank you because, God, you are exalted and the devil is defeated. And Father, we declare that we have the victory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. This morning, this month, we this last couple of months, we've been last couple, this last month, last couple of weeks, we've been talking about our sermon series, Live. Hallelujah. How many know that it is God's will, God's desire for us to live? It's God's desire for us. The Bible says that He has come so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. But in order for us to live, we have to have a connection to a power source. If you have looked in your life, if you look anywhere in your house, in order for electricity to power your refrigerator, in order for any uh, thing in your house to work, it has to be connected to a source. 
It has to be connected to something that has the ability to charge it to make it do what it was created to do. There's no point of having a refrigerator and it not be plugged in to power. Lord, I'm preaching better already. There's no reason that you would have a blender and the blender is not connected to power. You have an 80-inch television, but the 80-inch television is mounted on the wall. You got all the fixes. You got everything next to it. But what good is a television that's not connected to power? My same question to you, if we do not do that with our appliances, why in the world do we think that we can have life and not be connected to power? Why do we think we can live this Christian life and not be connected to the power source? Can I submit to you the reason why some of your life, your hope is dead, your dreams are dead, situations in your life are amok. It's not because God does not have the power to do what you need him to do could it be that you're just not connected to the power source you cannot be connect you're just not connected to the power source look at your neighbor this morning ask them are you connected to the power source now we know that this power source that we're talking about is Jesus he is our power source we do know that God is our power source right and so many of us in order for us to live our lives as Christians in this world you cannot do it without being connected how are we connected to God? We are connected to God, number one, through the blood of Jesus Christ that has redeemed us, that has destroyed the works of the enemy. And now we are seated as joint heirs. We are seated as uh, uh, sons and daughters of the Most High God. And we have a connection with God that has been restored by the blood of Jesus. So we are connected through God, to God through the blood of Jesus. But we are also connected and we connect to God through prayer. Somebody shout through prayer. Now this sounds very elementary for some of us. But you do know that we, I believe that more than ever we have a prayerless church. We have a prayerless church. I grew up in holiness back in the day and I wore all white today to remind you of where I grew up from. I grew up in holiness, Pentecostal, where we wore white every Sunday. I did not own a pair of jeans until I was in college. Did not wear a pair of shorts until I was in college and I grew up in Georgia. You can go back and check my yearbook. I was wearing a pinstripe suit. That's how, that's how holy we were. And these people that I grew up around did not have a lot of education, but they understood the basic principle in order to make it in a dying and hurting world that you have to be connected to the power source. And so they did not have the fog, they did not have the lights, they did not have the cameras, they didn't have flyers, they didn't have podiums, sometimes they didn't have microphones, they didn't have keyboards, but what they had was a voice and a will, a desire to connect to God because they understood that my social situation may not change, that in order for my economic situation to change, in order for situations to change in my life, in order to get directly direction and instruction for my next place in order for me not to kill myself and lose my mind I have to be connected uh, to someone that is greater than I now what we have done in our generation we have traded uh, the connection with God with charisma and formality and entertainment so we have a pretty church we have a church that fancy we have a church that has nice floors and has nice couches and has nice screens and has nice musicians and has nice everything the edifices are nice we got padded cushions we have all of the things but what we have seemed to do we have traded the raw presence of God for comfort and entertainment Y'all not talking to me this morning because that church, I remember growing up and seeing demons cast it out. I remember seeing people's marriages that were falling apart be miraculously put back together again. 
I remember seeing legs grow out. I remember seeing people walk out of wheelchairs. And it's not that the, that God has changed. The Bible says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. If he healed then, he can heal now. If he delivered then, he can deliver now. So what has happened between the old church and this church? What has happened between when people would come in and they didn't have the fancy clothes and they didn't have the big bank accounts? But what they had was a heart to connect and to serve the Lord. No matter what it took, they connected to him. They went in church and there was no air conditioner. There was no, all they had was the little church fans. Y'all remember the church fans? And you would have to fan yourself before you passed out with a stroke. But listen, they would come into the presence of God, desperate and hungry for God to do something in their life. Because they knew that there was no comfort here. So I have to tap into another place, another realm to get what I need to make it on this level. The problem is and what has happened is we have gotten the stuff on this level but now have forgotten the source that blessed us with the resources that we have now. Somebody shout, we got to pray, we got to pray, we got to pray. Listen, I don't want the saddest thing to see is a prayerless church. The saddest thing to see is a prayerless Christian. Why? Because prayer to a believer is what water is to a fish. Prayer to a believer is what the air is to a bird. Prayer to a believer is everything. It is the essence of everything. Let me tell you, prayer, it, prayer if I was a scientist I would say prayer is energy prayer is movement prayer is substance prayer is matter prayer has weight prayer has height prayer has depth prayer has velocity and many of us think that prayer is just something that we do for convenience to appease God but no prayer is a gift that has been given to us as the children of God to connect to another source when we have have nothing here uh, to be glad about proud about uh, and when we're depressed when we're lonely when we're upset uh, it is a direct connection uh, to God uh, it is a direct connection uh, to our Lord to our Savior to our Creator uh, to give us what we need uh, to make it in this hellhole called earth that's what I said I said what I said prayer uh, is everything it is everything and maybe the reason why some of our lives are the way it are is because we are trying to profess to be Christians with no prayer life how can you be a Christian and not be connected to God in prayer I'm not trying to beat anybody up this morning because we all can uh, pray a little better. We all can spend more time with God. But what the end, we have to understand that there is a strategy of the enemy to keep you outside of the presence of God because you do know the enemy has no power to destroy you. The enemy cannot even harm you because when you are connected to God and you because you are filled with his spirit, he empowers you, he covers you, he protects you. But if you are a Christian without a prayer life, it's like being refrigerated that has the ability to provide comfort light uh, amen but when you are not connected to the source uh, mold and mildew will form on your insides uh, yeah that's what I said I said mold and mildew uh, so what was once caught what was once created uh, to amen to have a purpose to have a destiny uh, it's now got bacteria growing on the inside of it uh, trying to contaminate its original purpose uh, in which it was created for what does that bacteria look like? It looks like sin. What does that bacteria look like? It looks like depression. It looks like anxiety. It looks like frustration. When you do not pray, the enemy cannot stop you, but he then uses frustration. He then uses anxiety. He then uses guilt and shame and rejection and hurt to stop you, to, put, to potentially uh, uh, get you, to stop you and block you from moving forward in your divine destiny and calling. Somebody shout, I got to pray. 
it is essential for you to pray. So, Pastor Rob, what is prayer? Prayer is everything. But at the most basic, and so I want to say this, this week and this month, I'm going to be dealing with prayer all month long. And I want you to come because this is why I want you to come and I want you to bring your family and your loved ones to church this month. Because if you don't have anything else, you need a prayer life. Why? Because the enemy and life could try to steal your joy. The enemy will try to take your house. The enemy will try to touch everything around you. But the one thing that the world, that the enemy cannot rip from out of you is your ability to pray oh! ah, do you not understand that prayer is the lowest common denominator to the life of the believer hell will try to touch everything in your life anxiety will try to touch everything in your life but the one thing that hell the devil your mama and even you cannot destroy is your ability to pray and to connect to God when you depress I can still talk to him amen when I'm lonely I can still talk to him amen when I am upset I can still talk to him do you realize that prayer is a gift that God has given you no matter where you are and what condition that you are in you have a direct connection to him I'm getting ahead of myself but Pastor Rob, what is prayer? Y'all ready? So on the most basic level, prayer is communication with God. Somebody shout, prayer is communication with God. Prayer gives us the ability to talk to God. But I also want you to know that this morning that prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is not something that we just rattle off. Prayer is a dialogue. It is a conversation. Other religions, and there are so many religions in the world that use some form of prayer or meditation, but their prayer and meditation has to do with them coming into a place of an enlightenment or them reaching to someone or trying to get to a specific place. But the difference as a Christian, our prayer, what it does is it not only allows us to connect to God, but it also gives God the ability to connect with us. Let me say that again when you are in when you are in islam it is about you trying to get to a place when you are in hindu if you are hindu it's about you trying to get to something or someone every other religion you can you can go through and i want you to do your research it is about you getting to a divine state to get some type of divine alignment but what prayer does prayer gets you into a place and a position where you can talk to him but he can come down to you prayer is communication with God this is important because as a believer you need prayer somebody shout I need prayer I need to be able to connect with God why should I pray Number one, because prayer allows you to communicate with God, your heavenly father and your creator. We have to understand that we are created in the image and the likeness of God. When we were created and humans were put on this earth, we did not just and here we are. We were created by God. We are God's creation. The Bible calls us the praise of his glory. We are the sons and the daughters of light. We are his. And prayer uh, gives us the ability to connect with our heavenly father. Let me say this again now. If you look throughout the book, and I'm going to try, like, y'all, this is a whole month, so I just want y'all to walk with me, okay? So prayer, if we look, it's when God, it gives God the ability to speak to us. When God created you, you were created to be in relationship with him. 
God did not make you so that you could be an island to yourself. You were created in the book of Genesis. I'll prove it. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, God spoke. He hovered over the face of the earth, right? And he spoke. He spoke. He said, let there be light. Let there be this. Let there be that. Let there be that. But then when he spoke to everything to create everything else, but when it came to humanity, uh, the Bible says that God said, uh, let us. He spoke to himself and said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness which means that God created us with intentionality and with this intentionality he created us he created us to be in communication and in fellowship with him your sound mind comes in being in relationship and communication with him the Bible says that when Adam was created, uh, that God walked with him in the cool of the day. Every day, he was walking and talking with God. Uh, he, was our, he is our Heavenly Father, and he walked and talked with humanity every day. We do know because of the false sin that's happened and there was a disconnection, Jesus comes and now that connection is restored. And God desires to still be in communication with us even though our sin has an agenda to separate us. Do you want to know why that sin and temptation continues to come in your life? Because it is a strategy of the enemy to keep you outside of the presence of God. Because if he can keep you outside of the presence of God, he can keep your true identity and your purpose away from you. Why do you continue to have temptation? Why do things come down your way? Why does it seem like stuff just finds you? Because when instead of just looking at it as a thing, when the enemy shows up, I'm letting you know what it is. It is the enemy. When temptation shows up, it is the enemy presenting you, enticing you with an opportunity to further disconnect you from God who is dying to have a relationship with you. Do you know that God wants a relationship with you? God wants to talk to you. God wants to be in communication with you. Matter of fact, God is always talking. He is the speaking spirit. It is us that do not and are not in the place where we're always listening. So what does prayer do? Prayer allows us to silence ourselves to begin to hear him. And whenever God speaks, like in the book of Genesis, uh, it, ha it gives us the ability to not only hear from him, but give us divine instruction, direction, and it allows us and allows God to create new realities in our life through his word. It's about communication. Somebody shout communication. We have to understand that prayer is a technology or a pathway that enables you not only to talk to God, but also receive from God. Prayer is a technology that allows you to not only talk to him, but to receive from him. Prayer is like Amazon, but it's a better version of Amazon. When you put that order in on Amazon, you want, you expect in that package to come at that front door well prayer is the same way when you talk to God God then has the ability through prayer through your faith to give you or to download to you or to give you everything that you need to make it in this world this is why people say prayer changes things it is God that changes things and it prayer just gives us the ability to partner with him to make it happen Question, if prayer is our ability to connect to God and to receive from him, what is it that God wants to get to you that he's not been able to deliver because you haven't been in prayer? What is it that God, what solution does God want to give to you? What idea does God want to give to you? What answer does God want to give to you? But he can't get it to you because you've not been in place to receive. Listen, Amazon can deliver a package, but if you are not home to receive it, guess what? Then sometimes they got to take the package back until somebody is home to receive what the gift was. 
Could it be that some things are held up in your life because you have not been in position to receive them? Can it be that God has some deliverances? God has some blessings. God has some things that he wants to download to your heart and to your spirit. But because you have not been in place, you has in store for you. Somebody shout, I got to pray because we got to understand that prayer is everything. Prayer is a place. It is a posture before God. The Bible says above all, I wish that you would pray. He tells us that we should pray without ceasing. Am I born y'all this morning? Prayer is important. Prayer is essential for you to make it as a believer in this world. It's a technology. Prayer is God's appointed way to obtain things. And the main reason that which we lack in our experience, in our life, and in our work is the neglect of prayer. James 4 and 2 says, you have not that which you desire because you fail to ask. If there's a deficit in your life, it's not because God does not have the ability to supply it. You've not been in position to receive it. These words contain the reason for the poverty and the powerlessness of the average Christian, which is the neglect of prayer. Can I submit to you this morning that you will only... Be as successful or as powerful as your prayer life. What are you talking about? Prayer strengthens your spirit man, which gives you the strategy, the strength, and the stamina to resist the works of the devil and falling into sinful cycles. We must remember that there is a devil and he is cunning and he never rests and he is always plotting the downfall of the children of God. And if the children of God relax in prayer, the devil will succeed at ensnaring us. What does this have to do with this text, Pastor Rob? It has everything to do with this text. Because if we look at the peripheral of our text, it is Jesus uh, who is training his disciples uh, to walk different as the children of God, as the chosen people of God in the midst of a broken society. Jesus says, listen, I want you to go throughout Judea, Samaria, the rest of the world. You got an assignment that you have on your life. And in order to get this assignment done, there are some core things that you need to know in order to make this happen, in order to live out your purpose, in order to live out your destiny, in order to make it in this world. There are some foundational things. So if you look at Matthew chapter 5, 4 and Matthew chapter 5, I want you to go back and read. It is Jesus training his disciples to walk in a certain way and to carry themselves in a certain position in order for them to make it in a world that's going to be crazy when he is not physically walking with them. And in this specific chapter, in this specific verse, he tells them, and when you pray, when you pray. Because you will need to pray. You will need to connect to me for information, for revelation, for insight, for strategy, for answers. Because you within yourself do not have what it takes to make it in this world alone. Maybe this is why some of our lives are wrecked because we are trying to make stuff happen in our own strength and our own abilities. But there is a place in life where no matter how much money you have, it cannot help you. No matter what your network is, it cannot help you. No matter who you know, it will not help you. There is a place in life where even the atheist will drop down and say, God, help me. Because there is a place in life where 
bring you uh, to your lowest common denominator to say that my money can't fix it, my connections can't fix it, my resources can't fix it, my mama can't fix it, daddy can't fix it, God, uh, if you are up there somewhere, uh, I need somebody to help me. Because even when your mind says there is no God, because we were created in the image and the likeness of God, your spirit and your souls know that there is somebody greater than me. It is in our pride that we say that there is no God. It is in our hurt that we say that there is no God. But I have seen big men with a lot of power and a lot of position and a lot of authority in the world that when they cannot find solutions, they have to recognize and it brings them to their knees. The Bible says at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Listen, life will bring you to a place uh, where you will have more problems than solutions uh, and you will need to tap into another place uh, another realm uh, in order to get the solutions for your problems uh, and how do you connect you connect through prayer So he is saying to his disciples uh, he's trying to set them up for success when you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others uh, what did he say to us in that text rather he said basically he is teaching uh, his disciples how you should manage your prayer life because beyond popular belief how you pray matters and why you pray matters. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. He tells them uh, the reason why you pray matters. Because the hypocrites... The people who are playing, you know what a hypocrite is? It's the same word for actor in the original language. It is an actor. It is somebody who puts on. It is somebody that creates an alternative reality for entertainment, to be seen, to be heard, to get an applause. So he's basically telling his disciples, if you want to be like, don't pray like the actors pray, where they have a form of godliness and their prayer is really to entertain. The prayer is really to make themselves look great in order for them to get an applause. If you talking to me to be able to be entertained and praised by them, listen, don't even matter. Don't even mind it. Don't even do it. Because your prayers will not be heard. He says, he says to them, basically, why you pray matters. I'm just setting a firm foundation for the rest of the month. Because prayer, I'm going to be talking about prayer in dimensions. There's so many dimensions of prayer. You got intercessory prayer. You got deliverance prayer. You got prophetic prayer. You got all these types of prayer. And I want us to be a praying church. But the first, you got to get this foundation of why you pray matters. If you're praying to be seen and to be heard, God, you are an actor. Listen, if you're going to play, you might as well go to the theater. This is not the theater. We pray to connect and communicate with God, not to be applauded by others. Where is your heart when you pray? It was a heart check. It was asking him, listen, if you're going to pray, if you're going to be my disciples, because you do know, I got to say this, and I don't want to preach too long, but you, you do, you, I got to say this, that when you pray, and especially as a Christian, as a believer, sometimes we get a little prideful. We get a little haughty. God deliver us from out of some stuff, and then we get a little money in the bank account, then we start smelling ourselves a little bit. And then what we do, we start looking at other people. How could they do that? And we start turning up our nose and we get religious. Uh, like the Sadducees and the Pharisees uh, where we use our position with God as privilege. Uh, and we look down at everybody else as peasants and as low people and think that we got a monopoly on Jesus. Uh, but one thing I love about God, God will save the dirtiest, the nastiest, uh, and the person that you think is disqualified uh, to show you that you ain't. 
that great. He says, if you're going to pray, you got to check your heart. Somebody shout, why I pray matters. <laughs> Prayer is communication with God. We are his children, and I want you to understand, we are his children. He is our heavenly father, and we do not just come to him. And we got to also understand that we don't pray for selfish motives. We don't pray for selfish motives when it's about you and it's about what you want and what you think and what you want God to do. Because some of us, we pray to try to manipulate God and manipulate situations in order to trick God. Wow. Trick God, right? The God who is a God of wisdom, who is the spirit of wisdom, right? You trying to trick God. Well, God, if have you now, if you ever said this prayer, I don't even want you to look. Just, just keep your head focused. Don't look at nobody next to you. God, if you just do this for me this time. God, if you, I promise that I won't ever. God, if you just get me out of this one, God, I won't ever find my. We are trying to manipulate God in order for us to get what we want out of Him. God is not your magical genie. He is not your genie. Why you pray matters. Stop trying to manipulate God because God has His own will. And prayer is not to necessarily change the will of God, but it is to discern it and to stand in agreement with God has said and what he wants. Can I say that again? It is to connect with God, not to push your agenda and your will. Because you are crazy. We all got a little crazy in us. Could you imagine what your life would be like if God gave you everything that you wanted when you wanted it? You would self-destruct. You'd kill yourself. You'd be gone. I know I would be. Because we, we say, oh, God knows my heart. And, he, and I say it all the time. He does. The Bible says the heart is despitefully wicked. And what happens when you allow that wicked heart to start praying? Then you start praying for other people's husbands and other people's wives. You start praying for stuff that's going to kill you. Oh, y'all ain't going to be honest to me. Y'all listen, listen. Uh, when that heart start talking, that heart will lie to you. That heart will manipulate you into believing that you okay when you got some problems. Especially when your mind ain't in the right place. This is why we ought to pray God's will and not our own. Because God is constant. When we are not, when we are crazy, God is stable. He is stable. Why you pray matters. Because when you do pray, for selfishness. When you do pray to be seen, guess what? The Bible says this. He taught his disciples, uh, that's all you're going to get, folks. There is no reward after that. You have gotten your reward. Boy, you sure did pray. Girl, you know you prayed heaven down. And God saying, I got, I got, I got, uh, uh, I got mansions and I got uh, uh, hills and I got money and I got all the riches. I got all this stuff for you in heaven. But because you set up for you have then forfeited everything and every spiritual blessing that God has in store for you for a hand clap. That is hard. How many times have you prayed and you've done stuff to be seen? Guess what? That's all the reward you got. That's it. That reward lasts. You won't even remember the hand clap 10 years from now. 10 minutes later, it's done. Why you pray matters. The posture of your heart when you pray matters. The second point with this, I, and I, I'm going to hit this and I got to go. But where you pray matters. The Bible says in verse 6, but when you pray, go into your room. Close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. 
Where you pray matters. And even though this is, some of us would interpret this literal, literally, literally what he's saying in the secrecy of your heart and of your spirit, in a place that you are not applauded by others, but in a place, a secret place, a house that you have made in your heart, your mind, and your spirit, a place where it's just you and God, where it's nobody else's opinion, nobody else's thought, nobody else is there, but you should have a place that is safe between you and God where you can speak to him and he can speak to you. Go into your room. Go into a place, close the door. Close the door. That's it, Pastor Omar. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you close the door, you realize and you are saying to God, God, I am here for no other reason but for you. I am not here for somebody else to get my attention, to get your glory. But God, I am here for you. Because prayer gives you intimacy with God. Prayer allows closeness to God. And if you are married, and I'm sorry for all the young people in the room, when you have a mate and you are wanting to be intimate with that mate, what do you do? You shut the door from other people walking into your most private spaces. And with prayer, it's the same thing. I go in because it's an intimate place with God. Because when I pray, not only does God share, but do I talk to him? He talks to me. And I don't have enough time this week to talk about what that prayer looks like and what he says. But let me tell you, if you've ever had God really talk to you, I'm going to just throw this out here. God doesn't talk to you about other people before he talks to you about you. God ain't giving you a prophetic word about somebody else's sin when you got your own stuff that you need to worry about. Listen, I do not understand how people say they have prayer lives and they are hateful and they are mean and they are boastful and they just spew out stuff. Because when I pray, I don't know about you. The first thing that I see, God, I got something wrong in me. God, I need you to help me. I need you to help me with my mouth. I need you to help me with my desires. I need you to help me with this hurt because God shows you you. He wants to have, and that is only a place, listen, of intimacy. Come on, everybody standing. I don't have enough time. But we're going to continue this chat, this series throughout this month because I want us, and I believe God wants us to be a praying church. I love the music. I love the shouting. I love it all. But we have to pray. Matter of fact, I want to challenge you this week. I want you to get up and let's start off this week one I want you to get up 30 minutes earlier than you normally would and for that 30 minutes before you turn on your phone before you check Facebook Twitter the news I want this is just a challenge for this week we'll go deeper every week for this week for the first 30 minutes that you wake up physically get yourself out of bed find you a space and pray. Can we do that this week? That's what I want us to do. Where we talk to God, but we also listen to Him. Let's pray. Father, I bless you and I thank you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, as we go throughout this month, that, Lord, that we were reminded that you said that men should always pray so they will not faint. Father, we don't want to fall by the wayside, but Father, we want to be built up in our most holy faith. Father, I thank you that this month, God, that every spiritual gift is going to be stirred. Father, that through prayer, callings are going to be revealed and released. Father, that through prayer, favor is going to fall on this church and we're going to be on fire for you. Father, I pray, God, for healing to break out, for deliverance to break out, for miracles to be manifested in this place when we pray. Father, I pray that you would meet everyone in their own homes this week, every day when they intentionally set time to pray, to connect with you. And Father, I pray that you would meet them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, I love y'all. Listen, I want y'all, it's time to give. How many enjoyed the word today, right? Y'all get something out of that? 
listen we're going to be the bible says our house his house should be called a house of prayer not just this physical house but this house your body the bible says you are the temple of